YouTube, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Lexi. Thank you for joining me in today's video. And if you are not new here, as always, thank you for your continued support. I really appreciate it. So I am doing a sit down video today about kind of a funny topic. And I hope that those of you watching are, you know, you enjoy it. It's a little entertaining. Um, but if you have not grasped by the title, I'm going to kind of be talking about being a bikini competitor against the rest of the world. So essentially what I mean by that is I want to talk about just some common misconceptions that I think the general public has towards bikini competitors and what bikini competitions truly are. Um, because I feel like from an outside perspective looking in when you don't know anything about the sport you kind of make all these general assumptions and it can look really weird from an outsider perspective looking in. So I'm going to talk about some kind of funny ones that I hear about a lot today and um, I also feel like this will be a good video if you do have a family member or a friend who just is somebody who kind of stereotypes bikini and bodybuilding this would be a good video to send to them just so you know you can really show them what it entails so First and foremost, um, if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. I am currently in prep and I am doing a whole bikini prep series, usually like a video every week. Um, and then share this video at the end if you really enjoy it and you think others would as well. So without further ado, let's get right to it. I've got a list and I'm going to start from the beginning. Okay, so the first kind of bikini bodybuilding misconception that I think goes around a lot is a lot of times people associate it with, oh, okay, you're wearing a bikini, bikini is easy, any girl can just walk on stage in a bikini and show off her muscles and it's easy, right? And I think if you're actually a competitor, you've been through a contest prep and you've done the whole thing before, you realize it is anything but easy. Of course, every prep is gonna be different for everybody. So some people have quote unquote easier preps, right? However, I think that general misconception of like, oh, okay, you're just walking around on stage in a bikini and you know, it's pretty easy. Um, that's, that's could not be farther from the truth. Um, I think, you know, as any bikini competitor out there, and even if you feel like you've had a quote unquote easier prep, there's not Nothing easy about it right there is a reason that this sport is very niche and that this sport is not something that a ton of people out there do and that's for a reason it's hard and it's something that you know not a lot of people have the discipline to do you may think you do but it's not just a little walk in the park it's it's pretty tough I mean rewarding for sure but bikini is not easy um, at all and I think that every division sometimes people say well bikini is the easiest division in bodybuilding to compete in and in my opinion my personal opinion I think every division has their hard right um, bikini is all about matching a specific criteria and being very balanced from top to bottom so you could look at that as being kind of difficult especially if you're a girl who is not normally very balanced maybe you have a very dominant muscle group or you know you're just not very balanced I mean achieving that balanced look in bikini is tough in its own way so that is myth misconception number one bikini is not a walk in the park it is not easy so that's number one now number two is and it kind of goes along with myth misconception number one is that bikini competitors don't train hard. Um, now, I think a lot of times people assume that because the bikini division in bodybuilding technically requires the least amount of muscle that us as bikini competitors don't really have to go into the gym and train super, you know, it's super heavy with a lot of intensity. And, you know, again, there's going to be outliers to every situation, but this could not be further from the truth. I know in particular for me, I'm as a natural athlete, a pretty hard gainer, um, I have to lift pretty darn heavy and for a long time in order to see that muscle growth, right? Um, now, I'll be very honest, I have had some girls before, like clients of mine, um, or just girls before kind of, you know, make the observation that they'll see specific bikini pros out there training um, a certain way that doesn't look maybe as intense. Maybe they're doing a lot of band work, accessory work. And I do want to make a note that once you do build the muscle as a bikini competitor, so once you are the best of the best and you are a pro your feedback is probably not going to be that you need to build muscle therefore you're not going to have to train how an amateur competitor would right um because you're just having to maintain your muscle you're really not having to put on muscle but 
The general consensus that bikini competitors like right from the get-go don't have to train hard is definitely a myth and this is something that I feel very passionate about because I think some females out there um you know they'll they'll start training in the gym maybe for a month or two and they'll be like oh my gosh I really like this I want to challenge I want to compete in a bikini competition and I love that goal but I don't think people truly realize how much lifting history you have to have in order to um or how much you know consistency in the gym you have to have built up and how much muscle you have to have built beforehand before you shred down for a bikini competition right um so that is going to be myth slash misconception number two now moving on to number three so number three kind of makes me laugh and i want you guys to comment below if you are a competitor who has experienced this because i think that this is something almost everybody assumes about us when we are in prep for a show and that is that bikini competitors don't eat anything yeah i will be very honest sometimes i feel like i almost eat more than my family um especially at the beginning of prep now i understand the last few weeks of prep the end of prep you're going to probably not be eating a ton right but i always feel like i eat more than my family and it's kind of funny when people say like oh you eat nothing i'm like or or i'll get this too you only eat protein or you only eat protein powder and i don't know where some people in my family have gotten that like that idea like they'll, they'll see me drinking a protein shake once and they assume that's what I like live on and I'm like no and in some of those scenarios you kind of just have to like you know laugh it off and it's not even worth explaining but I think that is a really common misconception that a lot of the general public makes is that we don't eat anything and that you know maybe or if you know they may say that or they may say oh you only eat chicken and asparagus or you only eat chicken and rice or you only drink protein shakes like that is such a funny misconception to me because you know maybe back in the old school bodybuilding days that was more normal people did have kind of extreme protocols and diets like that and that's not to say some people don't take that approach now but I think that like for me personally I have a macros approach um, as a coach myself and you know a coach who is coached by a coach I'm given macros by my coach so essentially I'm given my protein my carbs and my fat and then I get to choose what foods I fit into those macros um, but I just think that's funny because I definitely don't feel like I eat a significant amount less than the general public. Um, I mean, I definitely know I eat more protein than the general public, but I just think that that's funny. And I'm sure a lot of you guys out there have been told that before if you are a competitor or you, you'll get like people that just think you eat nothing. And I think part of it goes with the fact that when you are in a contest prep, you are getting smaller, right? So then, you know, the natural kind of assumption that a lot of people have is like, oh, how is she doing that? Well, she's probably not eating a lot, right? Which is not necessarily the truth. You know, if you're doing a competition prep, right you're slowly tapering down your food not just like completely cutting it all out at the beginning of a prep and, and staying that way so that is myth number three is that bikini competitors don't eat anything it is far from the truth people so number four um the number fourth myth slash misconception that i want to talk about is that a prep is kind of like a 10 week in a done thing or like there's a lot of times people assume that there's this universal timeline when it comes to a prep they'll be like oh i'm getting ready to start prep my 10 week prep or you know i'm getting ready to start my 12 week prep or, or, or they'll reach out to a you know a coach 12 weeks out from a show and they're like all right i'm ready to get started 12 weeks out and sometimes that can work for people i'm not gonna lie some people can manage to get by with that and i think a lot of times you know a lot of us maybe made that mistake early on as a competitor um, but when it comes to prepping for a bodybuilding show and getting lean for a bodybuilding show there is no universal time frame for prepping for a bodybuilding show it's not a 10 week and done thing or a 12 week and done thing it's going to require a different a different amount of time for everyone and I think that at least with the way I coach and the way my coach coaches um, I prefer longer lengthier contest preps just so they can be a lot Lot more gradual I feel like that's a lot healthier on the body and although you may think oh my god 20 plus weeks in a contest prep is so long well you know that's probably going to be more sustainable and actually better for the body if you're taking it slower and more steady um, you're going to be you're not going to be losing as much muscle as if you were to um, or if you were to you know rush the process and try to lose a ton of weight in 10 weeks but that is a general misconception that I think a lot of people have is that prep is like there's this universal time for prep for a bodybuilding show and it's eight weeks
weeks, 10 weeks or 12 weeks. Like those are the times I've always heard. Um, and I think that there was a point in the bodybuilding, like, you know, time, maybe back in the day where that was a lot more common. And I think that's where a lot of these myths and misconceptions come from is just from like the history. Um, but like, maybe that was 10 years ago. That's not how it is today. Again, some people can have eight week preps. Some people can have 10 week preps, but I think that a lot of times people who don't know a lot about the sport or who, you know, maybe they want to compete for the first time, they think that there's this universal like prepping time frame, and it's going to be very individual upon everybody, right? It depends a lot on how much weight you have to lose to get stage lean. Um, it depends on, you know, where your maintenance calories are at. Like there are so many factors that it can depend on, right? Um, so hire a good coach and they'll be able to tell you how long that you probably need to prep for a show. So that is the myth misconception. I think, what did I say? That was number four. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to number five, and that is that everyone is on drugs or everyone is on PEDs. So PEDs, performance enhancing drugs, for those of you who don't know or who are not familiar with that phrase. Um, you know, I think this doesn't get thrown around as much for the division of bikini specifically because we don't require as much muscle as some of the other divisions such as figure, wellness, fitness, all of that. Um, but I do think that like sometimes outsiders looking in, specifically maybe older people, um, you know, like I know my parents um, probably had this speculation at one point, even though I didn't give them a reason to, but I think sometimes it's just a stereotype that like every bodybuilder is on some type of drugs, right? Um, and especially like if you don't necessarily specify that you're a bikini competitor and you just say, oh, I'm a bodybuilder. As a female, I think a lot of times people like their mind goes to the big, like the women's bodybuilding division, the females that have a lot of muscle and they think, oh my God, okay, well, she's going to get all big and she's probably taking a ton of drugs and that's not the case um i'll be very honest as a seasoned amateur competitor um who does aspire to go pro i have been to enough shows and i've been in the industry long enough to realize that at an amateur level you do not need peds to be successful um i have seen many girls do very well without peds now i don't want to make this whole video on peds i could save that for another video and i know everybody has differing thoughts but my personal opinion is especially if you're a first time competitor do not get into the sport thinking automatically that you need peds or um, performance enhancing drugs you do not and i think it's very important that you kind of see where your genetic potential can take you first so so really grind in the gym and be 100% on your diet and take a few years to do so and see how far that can get you first, right? Um, because you definitely don't need to resort to PEDs right off the bat um, in order to be successful in the bikini division. Now, the pro league, that's a whole beast within itself, but I do think that there is a little bit of a misconception sometimes from the public that like in the sport of bodybuilding, everybody is on PEDs and everybody's on drugs, and that's not necessarily the case at all. I'm a natural athlete. I know many other natural athletes out there that are successful. Um, so obviously it's not, it's not like a universal, everybody who's in bodybuilding is on drugs. Um, okay. So that was number five. Now, number six is going to be that you need fat burners to lose weight or that every bodybuilder when they're in prep goes on a fat burner. Um, you know, I get this question a lot from first time competitor clients that I work with. We'll start prep and they'll, they'll ask me, Hey coach, um, you know, what fat burner do you recommend? Um, should I be taking a fat burner? And I will be completely upfront and honest with you guys. Throughout my years of competing, I have never taken a fat burner religiously. I mean, I've tried them before, like here and there, I'll get samples and I'll just try them here and there, but I have never religiously taken a fat burner. And I truthfully, this is my personal opinion, I don't think fat burners are truly worth it most of the time. There are, you know, a few like Yohimbean um, that can be beneficial in certain scenarios, but as far as just like your, you know, average supplement company's fat burner, can you take it? Absolutely. But is it really going to make a huge difference? No. Is it going to burn fat? Not really. You're, you're burning water weight a lot or you're sweating water weight. Usually those fat burners kind of, um, they increase your heart rate and you're, you know, you're sweating more. So do they really make a huge difference? In my personal opinion, no. And like I said, I have gotten stage lean many times without using them. So let me be living proof. Um, but you don't necessarily have to take a fat burner to 
have a successful prep to get stage lean like you know and, and I also always say like you can't out fat burn a bad diet and a bad training regimen right like your training your diet your cardio those are all going to be the most important and then maybe a fat burner can help with like that extra one percent but that's about it so I do think that that's a little bit of a myth and misconception so I did want to put that one out there Okay, so I've got two more myths and misconceptions for you guys in this video. So this next one, I feel like a lot of you guys are going to laugh when I say this um, and laugh because you know it's true. Um, I think a lot of times there is a misconception um, and kind of a myth out there. And a lot of people think as bodybuilders, but specifically as bikini competitors, when we are prepping for a show that we cut out carbs, right? Um, I hate that. I always get that question. But, you know, I think anytime I transform my body or I go through a prep, I always get just a random person who's like oh my gosh how'd you do that and I bet you're eating no carbs and you know that's not the truth of course there are going to be stages of your prep probably later on where carbs do get lower right or you may do some sort of carb cycling or you know may have some really low carb days but I personally have never cut carbs completely. In fact, I think they are a very valuable, um, you know, variable to be manipulating throughout prep. But I hate that just everybody always assumes that, okay, well, you lost weight, you must have cut out carbs. Like, I just hate how that's a myth in the whole society. But I'm sure you guys have gotten that before from people. Um, you know, I know I always get people that just say, oh my God, how'd you do that? I'm sure you had no carbs or you had to cut out carbs. And I'm just like, I just had to roll my eyes. But anyways, okay, last. Last and final myth, and um, this is actually a pretty pretty common one. I would say at least I know I fell trapped to believing this um, myth, myth slash myth conception when I first started competing, and that is posing is easy. Um, you know, when I first got into the sport of bikini and bodybuilding, I will be very honest, I did not practice my posing until like three weeks out from the show because I kept thinking to myself, I'm like, oh, it's going to be easy. Like, I'll just practice a lot. I'll practice every day leading up to my show a few weeks out and I'll get the hold of it or I'll get the hang of it. And that is really, I could not be farther from the truth. And you know, if you're watching this and you can agree with that, please comment below. Cause I always like to inform first time competitors and, and girls who are aspiring to compete that posing is a lot harder than it looks. Um, you know, because here's the deal with posing, literally the smallest thing can make such a difference. Like I'll put an example up here of me the other week, just playing around with my posing and and, you know, one, it was per my coach's recommendation, um, but, you know, posing can make such a big difference. You know, it can be a matter of, oh my gosh, your arm is an inch lower or higher, or your waist is turned a little bit more one way than the other. Like those little minute differences can literally take you from first to third. So I truly want to get the message out there um, specifically to first time competitors. And, you know, if you're somebody who's just wanting to get into the competing space, realize that there is never too early of a time to start practicing practicing your posing. I always say the earlier, the better, um, you know, because posing really can make or break you. And the last thing I would want is for a girl to work so, so hard to get her physique, um, you know, ready for stage and then to get on stage and not know how to showcase that properly with posing and therefore, you know, drop her placement by two or three spots because she just doesn't know how to pose, right? So posing is not easy, my friends. It is very difficult, very difficult. I actually have a lot of little graphics and tidbits on my Instagram. If you want to check out my Instagram, just for little posing manipulations and you'll see some of the things I post. I'll post like the smallest difference from you know one side to the other and it makes such a big difference in how the physique is showcased. So that is my last myth slash slash misconception when it comes to being a bikini competitor. Um, I hope this video is kind of interesting and just kind of fun for you guys to watch. I wanted to change it up a little bit. It's been a bit since I've done kind of like a sit down talking video like this. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again if you did please give it a thumbs up comment below if I missed any myths or misconceptions out there I mean I'm sure I did but I would love to hear um, some ones that you guys have maybe heard of so comment below share this video if you liked it and as always I am always open to suggestions for anything you guys want to see on my channel so please comment below if there is anything you would like to see in general from me um, but thank you guys for watching if you have made it this far and I hope that wherever you guys are at in the world you have a great rest of your day